everybody, I'm Dr. Deed Harrison. Uh, we are continuing our weekly uh, uh, CBP Nonprofit Research video presentations. Uh, this one is going to be the last in our series on left and right lateral head translations. Uh, this quick slide here, please go to the link that you see on this page and consider uh, donating and supporting CBP or donating to and supporting CBP Nonprofit Spine Research. Uh, we've done many, many projects in the peer-reviewed literature, in fact, just over 150. Several of these projects are actual clinical control trials, and what we're going to do is this week we're going to go through one of these clinical control trials. If you look at the list of journals that we've been in, we've been in some of the top spine and rehabilitation journals in the world. Uh, this particular week, we're going to go through our one and only publication out of one of the top rehab journals in the United States. It's called the Journal of Rehabilitation Research and Development. And it's really primarily a U.S. Veterans Rehabilitation Journal, but they do take other types of papers as well. It is an outstanding journal. The editorial board and the editor, they're top notch in their field. And it was quite an honor to be able to uh, have one of our papers and projects accepted for publication in this journal. Uh, so this week, this is our 16th uh, research video presentation. It's on our AP Cervical Translation Clinical Control Trial. It was in the Journal of Rehabilitation Research and Development in 2004, the August issue. The title of the paper, Conservative Methods for Reducing Lateral Translation Postures of the head, a non-randomized clinical control trial. Uh, myself, Dr. Deed Harrison, I was the lead author. This, this was my particular idea, and this was done out of my clinical practice in Elko, Nevada. Uh, the famous Dr. Rene Caillé, MD, physiatrist. Uh, my good friend, colleague, CBP instructor, Dr. Joe Betts. My other good friend and colleague and CBP instructor, Dr. Jason Haas. Uh, my late father, Dr. Donald Deed Harrison. Uh, PhD, DC, MSE, uh, his advisor, Dr. Tad Yonick, PhD in mathematics, and then the late Bert Holland, PhD in statistics, uh, formerly at Temple University. Uh, so th these are some uh, top names in the field back in the day, and this was a fantastic project. Okay, so first and foremost, let's review. A lateral head translation is a sideways shift of the head and neck, and you can see that in a patient's posture by looking at the center of the skull relative to the center of the upper thoracic spine, and you'll see a left or right shift. You'll see a bunching or a shortening of, of the uh, upper trapezius muscle and shoulder area on one side compared to the other side. The spine displacement patterns we've reviewed previously, these are very, very important to know. When we see somebody with this posture, we want to x-ray them and we want to make sure that they do indeed have a a kinematic pattern in their neck that's consistent with that posture. And here's what it should look like. We should see opposing lateral bending or tilt angles in the lower th um, cervical spine and upper thoracic spine to the side of the head translation. And then in the mid and upper cervical spine, it goes away from the side of translation. So in this particular project, in order uh, for a, a patient or a control uh, individual to be included in the project, they had to have a, a postural presentation of a lateral head translation, and B, they had to have the x-ray presentation of a lateral head translation. Okay, so here, here's our uh, methods, and just quickly we'll go through, through some general inclusion criteria. We have 51 consecutive patients that opted for treatment. These were compared to 26 control subjects that opted for no care. For whatever reason, these are subjects that said, I'm gonna self-select into the no care group. The no care group had a head translation just like the care group and they also had chronic neck pain. So both groups had chronic cervical spine pain with significant lateral head translations left and right. What we did is we did an initial examination in x-ray. We also had an initial pain scales on an NRS. So the two big things we're interested in looking at is x-ray and postural alignment before and after and then also pain scales before and after. So here's what we did. The treatment group, they got approximately 12.8 weeks of care, 37 visits. This is roughly three times a week. The CBP protocol is three times a week for approximately 12 weeks, 
36 visits, this is 37 visits, so we're right in there. You have to have consistent care is what we've been teaching. It's based on our results in our clinical trials, you'll see. The control subjects, what we did is we followed these control subjects for up to uh, 12 months, so up to a year. So they went from day one, they said self-select to no care, I have chronic neck pain, I have a head translation, I don't want care. We followed them for a year. Why a year? So we can see, is this posture actually stable? Does it remain the same? Does their neck pain remain the same? And you'll see it absolutely does with no care. The, the uh, treatment group, what did we do? Well, we did the Harrison CBP mirror image methods. We call these Harrison methods because my dad, the late Dr. Don Harrison, developed and invented these. He developed techniques for, number one, analyzing patient's posture, and number two, intervening. He called it mirror image. Mirror image methods simply means we do the exact opposite of what a patient has, and we'll show you that. So we did mirror image adjustments, mirror image exercise, mirror image traction. Every subject got this as the intervention. We did not do what we would call classic chiropractic spinal a joint adjusting or spinal manipulative therapy. We did none of that in this project. We simply did what we call exercise for E, A adjustments, T traction, and we did that in the mirror image. So here's the patient doing the exercise. You'll notice the model accidentally rotated the head a bit. Okay, we don't want that. This should be under supervision so we can see, are you truly moving your head in a pure sideways shift? You don't want to tip it or turn it. So we got to be careful with this. This is a model, right? And then here's the mirror image adjustment on the drop table. And then here's the mirror image traction. Look how exciting traction can be for people. This is my younger sister. And some of these photos of her just kill me. They were done late at night. It's the best I had at the time. These were taken like 15 years ago. And some of them late at night, like at midnight, my younger sister, Stephanie, she was pretty tired of taking the photos, so uh, that's her smile. Um, and of course, I keep it in there just to remind me. And now it's out on YouTube. This is great. Study results. So after the 37 visits or after the 12 months in the control group, here's the control group data. No significant differences were found in the control group over 12 months for their pain scores and no x-ray measurement changes. In other words, they look exactly the same as when they started. If you don't do anything for it, it doesn't get better. The chronic neck pain stayed chronic. It doesn't just go away. Now, I'm not talking about acute neck pain. I'm talking about something that's been there a long time. If you continue to do the same exact thing that you're doing right now that you did before, guess what the result's going to be? Nothing. You're going to be exactly the same. You're going to have chronic neck pain. It blows your mind. People are like, oh, yeah, I'll just deal with it. Really? You want to deal with chronic neck pain? How long do you want it? You want it a year? Do you want it two years? Let's do something about it. Sometimes I'm just like, how can somebody even self-select themselves into a control group? You know, but when you're doing a project, you're like, yeah, great, be in the control group because we need people in the control group. But the clinician in me, I go, why? Why would somebody do that? Anyway, side note, side story. Treatment group. Statistically significant improvements in treatment group subjects pain scores, that means their pain's better, and in the translation, distance on the x-ray, C2 to T3. Look, this is about a 50% improvement in 37 visits. 50% better. 13 millimeters over down to 6 millimeters over. Both the distances and angles improved. Also down here, this is an important finding, clinically significant finding. People that had greater pain improvements also had greater improvements in the angle in the mid-neck. In other words, the more your mid-neck angle reduced, the better your pain outcome was. This is a very important finding. Okay? This indicates that the alignment of your cervical spine correlates to how you feel from a pain point of view. Just to show you the before and after measurements. Okay, this is pre-measurements here in this column. This is post 37 visits later. You'll see we have statistically significant changes in all the variables. And I'm gonna show you an x-ray of these variables so you're reminded by it, but if you've watched the previous videos, you should know what these things mean. We have four measurements that we're looking at on the x-ray. The overall translation distance from top to bottom, the mid-neck angle, 
the upper thoracic and low neck tilt angle to vertical, and then the translation of the mid neck apex relative to vertical. This is what we're looking at. Here's a case out of this uh, particular project. 17 millimeter translation, seven degree mid neck angle, eight degree uh, low neck upper thoracic angle. You see that that's reduced down to four millimeters, three degrees, and then it doesn't say, but that's probably two or three degrees at the bottom. Th this is a little bit bigger than average change. The average person improved 50%. This person is more than 50%. For every average, there's people that hover right around the average, and then there's people that change way more than the average, and then there's a few people that change less than the average. The, the people that change less, they're harder cases. They need more time. The people that change more, hey, that's easier, great. 37 visits was about right for you. But most people right in the middle, you're going to need about 74 to 80 visits to really get this thing to straighten out. If I improve at 50% in 37 visits, then what we gotta do is look at it and go, really what we wanna do is improve this close to, you know, 100%, so let's keep going. This particular project, because it's a clinical control trial, we didn't do that with the patients. We stopped care, okay, it's a clinical trial. Here's what we found. At the end of this treatment protocol, 37 sessions over about 13 weeks, about three times a week, a new type of lateral translation traction, we call it the Berry Translation Traction Table. Dr. Bob Berry in uh, New York designed this translation uh, traction table that we investigated in this project. Hats off to Dr. Berry, great device. This type of translation traction combined with postural mirror image exercises and postural mirror image adjusting produced significant x-ray changes and positive changes in pain measurements at, out, at uh, follow-up outcome. Following treatment, an approximate 50% improvement was noted in the abnormal lateral head translation posture on the x-ray. In the control group, we got no change in pain and x-ray alignment. Therefore, what we conclude is our interventions did something. This is why having a control group is very important. They have to be matched for appropriate variables, age, weight, height, sex, and pain to the uh, intervention group. And what we can now say is doing CBP, chiropractic biophysics corrective care, over the course of about 13 weeks improved the alignment and pain as compared to a group of match subjects that did nothing. We know our treatment does something. This is the, the relevance of the clinical trial. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, this particular project. It kind of cements our series of research projects on lateral head translation postures. We talked about how frequent they are. We talked about how large they can be. We talked about x-ray patterns in the mid neck, what they should look like. We talked about does this really affect people's pain and disability? We showed you a couple case studies where we published in the literature that when we improve these head and neck alignments, that people do better. And then now we sealed the deal with a clinical control trial. Yeah, it's not a randomized trial, but you know what? A non-randomized trial actually, in my opinion, has more clinical relevance because this is what people do. They come in your office and they decide whether or not to do care with you. In your office, you don't randomize people to a, a treatment group or a control group. That's not the way it done, is done. This is why we did a project in this manner. We did a non-randomized self-selected allocation, meaning if you decided you wanted to have care, you got the care. If you decided you didn't want the care, you didn't get the care. This is actual, true, legitimate clinical practice. This is what happens. We're very proud of this project. It's a non-randomized clinical control trial. I should also say that the examinations were independently done by different people, okay? I didn't do my own examinations. In fact, the examining doctor was blinded to whether or not a subject was in the research project at all. And in the control group, the examining doctor, uh, were, or the examining doctors were different from initial to follow-up. So the initial evaluation was a different doctor than the post-evaluation in the control group. In the treatment group, 
These were, it was actually done by the same examining doctor, but the examining doctor didn't know whether or not the patient was in a research project or not of interest. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this project. Until next time, please continue to watch these videos. Please continue to support CBP Nonprofit and uh, support CBP seminars if you're a chiropractor out there. Thank you very much for your time and attention. If you like this information, if you're a patient, you need to go to a chiropractic biophysics trained chiropractor. You can find us all over the United States, Canada, and international locations. Go to www.cbppatient.com and look up CBP providers in your area. It's an easy to use, uh, user-friendly site. Search for, at first, a general or advanced trained CBP chiropractor. If you can't find one of those, then find somebody that's at least on the directory and has taken our courses and that does the work, okay? So let's go to a CBP trained chiropractor, www.cbppatient.com. If you're a chiropractor and you're interested in this, either learning more about it or maybe it's brand new to you and this you know, particular video research project intrigues you, come to our website for doctors. Go to idealspine.com. We've got a lot of things there for you. We've got training, we've got conferences, we've got products. Love to have you on board and become one of the CBP doctor family providers, right? We need your help. There's patients out there that need you. And if you don't get trained in this work, then you're not going to be able to provide them the type of service that we think you should be providing them from a corrective care point of view. Also, lastly, anybody out there, we also need your help to continue to do research investigations like this, right? These are time and dollar consuming projects. If you will, go to our web uh, site directly and sponsor and support Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit. Make a donation of any amount to us. Also, you can do it indirectly on Amazon Smile. Just select Chiropractic Biophysics as your nonprofit foundation. And when you purchase through Amazon Smile and Amazon, CBP Nonprofit will get a half a percent of all your purchases, which is a big deal. It adds up. Thank you very much for your time and attention.